Summers have been really harsh this year, and with the temperatures climbing well over 45 degrees Celsius almost every day, kinda makes life a bit difficult. Well, not only for us, but also for our air conditioners, because when it is this hot outside, your AC might have trouble cooling if you haven't done proper maintenance. Hey guys, this is Tech Guy Charlie. In this video, I'm gonna give you some simple tips that will help your air conditioner keep running and keeping you nice and comfortable even when it is 47 degrees Celsius outside. So if you want your AC to blow ice cold air even when it is 47 degrees Celsius outside, well, then the first thing you'll need to make sure is that the condenser is clean. So walk over to your air conditioner's outdoor unit and look at the condenser. If it is clean, you should be able to see through the coils. This is an LG AC and it has double layer coils. But we're still able to see through them because I cleaned them 3 months ago. But if you feel that the coil of your AC is dirty, then grab a hose and rinse the coil with plain water. This clip is from the month of March, so you want to do this before the summers actually begin. That way your AC will be ready and you don't have to stand outside in 47 degrees cleaning your unit. And I've never pressure washed mine or used any coil cleaners. This simple method always works well. And you will see that this will dislodge all the dust and dirt making the condenser exchange heat more efficiently. Now keep in mind it's never gonna be as good as new, you just have to make sure that it is clean of dirt and dust. So rinse it until the water starts running clear. And make sure to rinse off all the dirty water that's on the ground, otherwise the water is gonna evaporate and the dirt is just gonna get sucked back into the condenser. And if the condenser is in good condition, this is how it should look like after cleaning. You should be able to see right through it even though if it's a double layer condenser. So cleaning the condenser should solve most of your cooling issues. These air conditioners are designed to cool even at 52 degrees Celsius. Well, at least LG inverter air conditioners are. It even says so in the specifications on their webpage. So with a clean condenser, my air conditioner blows about 5 degrees Celsius worth of cold air even when it is 47 degrees Celsius outside. And if you are wondering, this is LG's hot and cold AC. The model is H24 VNXT1. And I've also done a review of this exact AC about 4 years ago. So if you want to watch that video, I will leave the link in the video's description. Now, call me crazy, but I have noticed that the AC doesn't blow as cold as it should when the condenser is exposed to direct sunlight. I think this is because the temperature of the coil which is exposed to direct sunlight goes up to 50 degrees Celsius even when the AC isn't running. So when you switch your AC on when the condenser is already hot, well it's gonna have a hard time rejecting the heat that is in the refrigerant. So it's gonna take a while until the room cools down. Now this is not a problem when the temperature is below 44 degrees Celsius, but when it is 46 plus then the AC is not gonna blow as cold as it should when the condenser is exposed to direct sunlight. I actually did a little experiment to find out for myself. So right now you can see that the condenser is exposed to direct sun and the air coming out of the air conditioner is about 10.7 degrees Celsius. So it's not that cold. Now, you'll notice that when we give the condenser a bit of shade using this umbrella, the temperature of the air coming out of the indoor unit drops to about 7.8 degrees Celsius from 10.7. And that's a pretty significant difference. Now, of course, there's a chance for margin of error, but I personally think that having the condenser in shade makes a difference. However, I don't recommend that you use an umbrella or any sort of artificial shade because you might end up accidentally restricting the airflow to the condenser. So don't do this. Instead, have your AC installed where it does not get direct sunlight. Like this unit never gets direct sunlight. So it's never had any issues cooling down a large room. It blows ice cold air even when it is 47 degrees Celsius outside. You know what? I actually thought that there was something wrong with this thermometer. Surely it can't be 47 degrees. That's 117 degrees Fahrenheit. So I bought another thermometer. And sure enough, it is actually 47 degrees. Yikes. 
And many brands including LG will tell you to install the AC in shade because the parts that are exposed to direct sun kinda get really hot. And considering the amount of electronics these inverter ACs have in the outdoor unit, kinda makes sense to have these units installed where they don't receive direct sunlight. But I know many of you guys will have limitations. Like I've got one of my units installed in such a way that it gets direct sunlight. Yet, it's been working fine and I've never had any issues. So in this situation, to help the AC cool a bit better, what you can do is, after switching on the AC, spray some water over the condenser. I'm using this bottle which turns water into fine mist and during dry weather, this actually works great. So after spraying water, the temperature of the condenser drops down to 30 degrees and that's gonna help the AC a lot. So after spraying water on the condenser, you can see that the temperature of the air coming out of the AC drops down to 2.8 degrees Celsius. And keep in mind this is on a super hot 46 degrees Celsius day. Although the effect is temporary, doing this twice is more than enough to bring the temperature down on a hot sunny day. And keep in mind you only have to do this when it is extremely hot outside because when the temperature is below 45 degrees, the AC is not gonna have any troubles even if the condenser is exposed to direct sunlight. So the bottom line is, have your AC installed in shade but if you can't, Spraying water over the condenser will help temporarily. Also, notice how the power consumption drops drastically as the temperature of the condenser drops due to water. So now that the condenser is nice and cool, the compressor doesn't have to work as hard as it would have if the condenser temperature was at 50 degrees. So we've gone from 1.9 kilowatts to just 1.36 by cooling the condenser with water. So I guess keeping the condenser cool and especially away from the sun will also help you save energy. Now, other than having a clean condenser, there are three crucial things that you must check if you want your AC to cool in extreme heat. Number one, you must make sure that the air filter is clean because dust on the filter will restrict the airflow thus reducing the cooling power of your AC. So you want to take the filter out and clean it with plain water every 15 days if you use your AC a lot or else once a month is more than enough. It really depends on how much you use your AC. Secondly, you must also make sure that the evaporator which is the indoor unit coils are also clean. It's pretty easy to check because once you've got the filter out, you should be able to see the evaporator coils. If it's got any dirt or dust on it, you will have to get it cleaned by a professional. They'll use a pressure washer and coil cleaner to clean these. I actually tried cleaning the coils myself. It's actually very easy to open these LG air conditioners. So I thought, hey, why not do it myself and also include it in this video. So I bought a coil cleaner of Amazon and sprayed it all over the coils. This one is actually made for automotive air conditioners. So it is pretty mild and safe for micro channel coils. It actually foams up quite well. Now this is actually a no rinse coil cleaner so you don't have to rinse it with water. The condensation on the evaporator will rinse it out automatically. But after leaving the coil cleaner on for 5 minutes I decided to rinse it off. And it was probably a good idea to rinse because a lot of dirt and chunks came out from the evaporator. And yes, ideally you want to rinse this off with a pressure washer but since I don't have one, this will have to do. But yeah, look at the amount of dirt that came off from the evaporator. I might have to pour some extra water just to make sure that the condensate drain doesn't get blocked. But yeah, there you go. So according to me, the most difficult part was rinsing out the coils that are at the back. But eventually I got to them. And this is how a properly cleaned evaporator coil looks like. Nice and shiny. So that's gonna increase the efficiency of our AC. And keep in mind it's never gonna be as clean as if it was new. You just have to make sure that there is no dirt or dust on it. And reassembly is very easy. You just have to make sure that these clips align and rest of the plastic just falls into place. And you just have to screw in two screws. Install the decoration part and that is pretty much it. So this is something that you can do over a weekend once every year. Or if you don't want to do it yourself, 
get your AC serviced by a professional. And lastly, open the flap with your hands and check how much dirt is accumulated on the blower fan. This one is clean because I clean it regularly, but eventually the blower fan is gonna look like this and you will have to get it cleaned typically once every two years if it's a normal AC or every year if it's a heat pump because then you'll be running the AC in heat mode during winters. I've actually never pressure washed the blower fan. I always clean it using this brush. It typically takes around 10 minutes for me to clean this. It's more than enough to get all of the dirt and dust off the blower fan. But yeah, if it's totally clogged with dust, then you'll need to pressure wash the blower fan or even take the blower fan out and clean it with running water. So having a clean blower fan is essential. Otherwise, you're not gonna get enough airflow. Speaking of airflow, you also might wanna increase the fan speed to at least medium, which is F3 on this AC if it's a medium sized room or set the fan speed to maximum if your AC is installed in a large room. This is because we want good airflow over the evaporator coil and also having the fan set to high will help the cold air reach the other corner of the room, thus giving you better cooling. Now, during the monsoon season, you can set the fan to low to help remove moisture. But during hot and dry summers, you want to set the fan to a slightly higher speed because this is going to help to quickly cool down your room. And most importantly, I've seen many people who set the temperature of their AC to 16, hoping that will help cool down the room faster. Well, no it won't. But setting the fan speed of your AC to high will definitely help cool down the room much faster. Now this is a personal choice, but you also might want to use the ceiling fan as this also helps spread the cold air throughout the room. I personally like to use the ceiling fan when I'm using the AC, but if you don't, I recommend that you try this. And don't switch your AC off when you start feeling cold. Instead, increase the temperature to where you feel comfortable. You see, the goal of having an AC is to feel comfortable and not to feel cold or freeze yourself. For me personally, the temperature range from 26 degrees to 28 with the ceiling fan on feels very comfortable during hot summers. And this is also gonna decrease the power consumption. I've seen this AC consume as low as 600 watts late at night to maintain 27 degrees Celsius. So set the temperature to where you feel comfortable. That's also gonna help save energy and you can leave your AC running without worrying about your electricity bill blowing up on your face. There are also other things that you can do to make sure that your AC cools well, like making sure that the cold air stays inside the room by checking for air gaps under the doors. I've got this brush installed which does a pretty good job of keeping the cold air inside. You also might want to check your windows to see if they are properly closed for good isolation. I've actually got sealant in these so these don't leak air at all which eventually helps the AC. And most importantly, if you live on the top floor where the top of your ceiling is exposed to direct sun, you might want to consider getting a false ceiling which has an air gap in between. That is going to cut down on the amount of heat your AC has to remove. And you can clearly see the difference between the temperature of the false ceiling and the original ceiling. It's huge. This is definitely going to make a big difference. Now even after taking all of these steps like having a clean condenser, evaporator, blower, filters and setting the fan speed to high and making sure that the air doesn't leak, if your AC is still not able to cool your room, well there might be three possibilities. Number one, your AC might be undersized for your room. Secondly, one of the refrigerant lines might be kinked. Or lastly, you might have refrigerant related issues like your AC might be low on charge or you might have contaminants in the refrigerant itself. Like if you haven't pulled a vacuum while installing your AC, then you're gonna have air and moisture mixed in with the refrigerant which is gonna impact the performance of your AC. So this is why always, always make sure that the AC techs pull a vacuum before they release the gas which is in the outdoor unit during installation. Now this is specific to LG's inverter ACs, but they've got this auto diagnostic feature in which the AC communicates with the smartphone 
and you will be able to see some important info of your AC. So to set this up on your Android smartphone, you will have to download the LG Smart Diagnosis app. And once you've got it, open it and select the wall mounted unit from the options and then tap on receive. Then grab the remote of your AC and press and hold the button which says diagnosis for 5 seconds until you hear a beep and then wait until the AC sends info to your smartphone. And there you go. You'll be able to see various parameters of your AC in a format that is straightforward and easy to understand. I'm not gonna go into too much details because this is something that I've already covered in a previous video. I'll put the link in the video's description. Anywho, the bottom line is, if you want your AC to last long and cool properly, then proper installation and maintenance is the key. I've seen 25 year old ACs still working great because their owners did regular and proper maintenance. And I've also seen ACs that barely last 3 to 4 years because they were never cleaned or maintained properly. So if your AC looks like this and has corroded coils, well there is not much that you can do. Then it's probably a good idea to start investing in a brand new unit and then do proper maintenance. But yeah, these are all the things that you can do at home to make sure that your AC cools even when it is 47 degrees Celsius outside. So yeah, let me know if these tips were helpful. If they were, make sure to hit the like button, share the video with your family and friends and subscribe to the channel. This is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.